Pony Redemption Worship Center and welcome to our Sunday morning service. We're so happy that you could join us here today. Go get that bread or biscuits, get your grape juice prepared because today we'll be participating in Holy Communion together. Before we get started, let's take a moment and click that share button. Let's share this live premiere video so that our friends and our family can join in and be a part of what is happening right here. Well, today we have a great service in store for you. We're going to start things off with a dance, followed by a powerful word from Pastor Donald Ramdas. And lastly, we'll participate in communion together.
Bishop Centre family. It's really a blessing to be here with you again today on this um, service. I chose to have the service at my, you know, my beach property, um, really to encourage you all because it's been a really rainy weekend in Trinidad and Tobago. And, you know, I wanted to set myself apart from, you know, what it is when it comes to the environment, but put ourselves in a place where we want to be. And I really appreciate you all joining in and sharing our online church experience. And I would like to start this service, not with a word of prayer, but only an encouraging message, but also to reflect upon life. And one of the things that I want to speak about is really a great loss we've had in the ministry. And that is the passing of Sister Carla Kamabach. She has been a faithful member of Redemption Worship Center for countless years. And I, I thought it would be remiss if I did not speak about her life as part of this message. And it is showing about how, you know, grace can take us not only where we need to be, but where we need to go and what lives we need to touch. And she has touched my life in, in ministry in so many ways. And she has been involved in ministry in so many ways, not only as a worship leader, but, you know, in, in different ministries when it came to teaching, when it came to the adult ministries. And I think we need to celebrate her life and spend some time talking about her as an individual. And Sister Carla would have been part of our ministry for the last, I would say, 25 plus years. At least that's what I recall and I remember. And she'd have been involved in so many different ministries, but not only herself, but her family as well. Her husband, JC, her kids, you know, Carlos, Aaron, uh, and Crystal. And by extension, her parents, you know, brother and sister Richards, who would have been faithful members of the, the church and really stalwarts in, in the ministry to bring us where we are today. And there's also, you know, her sister Kim, who I ask, you know, that you all keep everyone in their family in prayer during this time. She unfortunately has passed and we need to look at it not only as a time of mourning, but a time of celebration and victory in Christ. Celebrating her life and what she has been to this ministry, but also celebrating the fact that, you know, she has lived that Christian life that could be an example and she's in heaven right now looking down at us. And really, I'm sure she's worshiping with the angels and saying those words of prayer on our lives. And when we look at some of the scriptures that talk about that, we look at 1 Corinthians 15, 55 to 58. It says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And it's just a reminder to us, there's a saying, uh, I'm not sure if I saw it in a movie or I may be paraphrasing, but it says, you know, when death smiles at us, the least we can do is smile back. And as Christians, we have that privilege, we have that authority, knowing that through salvation, we have overcome death. We have taken our lives and put it into that of the Lord, and our future is guaranteed in his blessings. Amen? And Sister Carla is an example of that. She lived her life as a Christian, following his path, following his will for her life, ensuring that her family were grounded in Christ, and that is the least we could do or expect of any believer. And we need to be assured that there is salvation for everyone that is out there, but there's also a purpose and a plan for our lives. And there's a destiny for where Christ wants us to go. So that is not only mourning, but it's also celebration. Celebration of that life and that victory that she has brought through Christ. And there's a couple of memories I'd like to share because, you know, Sister Carla was one of those members that, was involved in ministry for so many years, but sometimes you see little things that matter to us. And two memories came to mind. The first one I would say was a, it was either the first or second message I would have shared at the um, old church or the old church facility where we had a baptism service after. And you know, sometimes baptism is, we focus so much on the aspect of baptism and that water baptism and the, 
you know, proclamation of our faith in the community and publicly that could, you know, carry us to that next level. But baptism was also about spending time or that service was about spending time with each other. You know, it was not only the baptism and the aspect of those individuals, but we had, you know, fun and games. We had football on the beach. We would have spent time, you know, at least, you know, bathing in the beach and spending that time with each other. And I remember Sister Carla saying those simple words, you know, I was so encouraged by your word, your sermon, and, you know, keep it up. And sometimes you don't look for praise, you don't look like for glory, but we also look for encouragement from other believers. And just those words were simple, but it was so encouraging in my life to know that an elder in the ministry, someone who was being there, done that, uh, could view my part in the ministry as being useful. And it was such a blessing to my life. And the second would have been what a lot of people, you know, who would have gone through redemption would have known, we'd have had sports days in the past. And Sister Carla was, this was probably in my teens, somewhere around 16, 15, 16, we'd have had those sports day activities where we'd have had a March pass, we'd have had different games where we spend with each other because one thing is about developing in the world, but it's also developing as a community and as a church and spending that time with each other. And I remember two things. One is she would have chosen, I have no idea for what reason, the brightest yellow color to have as a uniform. And Sister Kim would have sewn those pants, bright yellow, the brightest yellow, fluorescent yellow possibly. But, you know, I was so encouraged by her enthusiasm to be involved in the ministry and be involved in our lives that I look past that. And even though I will admit, you know, that bright yellow wasn't my favorite color, was my favorite uniform, but we had that sports day. And the one memory was that 4 by 100 mixed relay that we had as one of the events. And I remember telling Sister Carla, you know, the other teams are so much faster than us. You know, they're gonna beat us, they're gonna win. And she said, you know what? Just run your fastest and have fun. Just focus on that. And I remember entering that race and just thinking about her words, do your best, run your fastest, have fun, have fun in your ministry, have fun in what you're doing, enjoy it, but put your all out there. And we actually rock, we actually won that race. And that was one of those moments that you think you couldn't do it, but just that encouragement and those words of encouragement made a big difference in my life. And it not only applied to that sports, the activity, but to the ministry going forward. And sometimes you wonder during this COVID period or the challenges that we face, you know, God, why am I going through this? Why am I facing this? Is this your will and your purpose for my life? There's death, there's destruction, there's despair in this world. What do I focus on? And that's why Psalm 23 is so important to me, where it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And that's the basic part of the day. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We could stop there and take assurance in that, that God is there first, no matter what. He's our provider. But it goes on to say, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And this is the part I think we need to take to us, with us through this COVID period or through our challenges in life, whatever it may be. Whether it be job security, whether it be relationship issues, no matter what we are going through, it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. It doesn't matter what issues we are going through, what challenges we are going through. We need to know that the Lord is there with us through our journeys in life. And we need to focus on him and his greatness that could take us through any situation we are going through. And it's amazing how the scripture links one verse to another, where it says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup, cup runneth over. Even through that valley of the shadow of death, he is still preparing a table for us. He is still preparing that presence that he could be with us, no matter who our enemies are, or what we are facing. He has a future that is assured, and he has that blessing for us. And, you know, verse 6 says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And that's a testament to Sister Carla's life. 
she would have dwelled in the house of the Lord forever. She never gave up her conviction, her faith in Christ. She was always involved. She was one of those leaders who were very dynamic and I would say glamorous in the sense of fashion as well. I was admired about her, the way she took about herself with grace and passion in her ministry. And we need to understand that as Christians, we need to focus on the lives of those that have gone before us and build on who we are in Christ and take those examples and lead us to where we need to be with him. So I'd like us to take this time to really, you know, reach out to that Kamabach family, give them words of encouragement, pray for them, let them go through this mourning period and see the joy of tomorrow. Because there's a time for mourning and there's a time for joy. And this time of mourning, we need to stick together as believers to encourage each other through whatever challenges we may go through. So I'd just like to start my message with those words of encouragement to the Kamabach family and even to the membership of Redemption Worship Center to stay encouraged and stay blessed and be there for each other, be there for one another so that we may be able to build stronger and go forward in unity through Christ. So what I would like to do is a continuation of my messages or my series on directed by God driven by faith. And I would have spoken about Solomon's regrets. I would have gone through certain scriptures in Ecclesiastes that talked about his you know, lust or longing for pleasure, his lust or longing for knowledge, work, and money. And how, if we focus on those aspects and not have a proper balance in our lives, it could take us down that destructive path. And where we need to understand and learn from those before us, just as Solomon wrote in those scriptures, we can look at the lives of others, we can look at the lives we are leading and understand what changes we need to make. And really putting God first in our lives, following him and trusting him with our whole heart. I have gone on to really speak in, you know, Matthew 6, 33, where it spoke about seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. And he focused on his kingdom, what plan he has for us and our lives. Not looking at all the distractions in life, but looking at where he wants us to go. And where he wants us to go, he will take us, but he will be there for us. And I also spoke about the different ways he is there for us. The different names of Christ or Jehovah when it comes to Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Shama, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Rasa, Ra, and Jehovah Sitkenu. The scripture gives us encouragement that Christ is there for us no matter what we are going through, no matter what challenges we have, he is there as our comforter. He has sent his Holy Spirit to be a guidance to us. And that's really where I want us to keep focused on. We are not in this journey alone. We don't only have the members of Redemption Worship Center or our brethren to support us, but we have Jesus and his blessings to look upon and to hold on and to stay strong with. And that's what I encourage you all with. You know, look to the different faces of God to understand where he has or what part he has for us and that he, has, he is there to take us through no matter what challenges or journeys we are going through. And I've continued to go through, you know, the life of Moses, where it spoke about his different three 40-year periods, where he lived in the Pharaoh's palace for the first 40 years. He would have been adopted as the son of the daughter of the Pharaoh and had the only comforts of life. His second 30 years, he got married, had his children and worked in his, for his father-in-law. And he moved on to the, the last 30 years of his life, where he, he brought the people of Israel through the wilderness. And even though he brought them through, he didn't enter the promised land. But his life had a purpose and a calling through Christ. And we need to learn from these examples, not only Solomon, but Moses and their journeys through transition, their journeys through their lives and what they have written in the scripture to encourage us, but also to guide us and teach us as to where we need to go as Christians. And my message today is really about how we use our time and talent for Christ and our time and talent in the ministry. And even though I was reflecting upon my decision to come into the ministry full-time, I went to the Bible, I went to devotion, I went to prayer, and I asked God to guide me in my, not only my thoughts, but my actions of how I approach things. And two scriptures that I would like to focus on today are really Romans 12 and Matthew 25, because they both really meant a lot to me in my journey 
to where I am today. And I want it to be a current encouragement to you all as well in, in your journeys in life and your journeys through Christ. Because we all have different journeys, but we all have a common purpose. And that is to meet the lost, to save the souls that are out there that, you know, those sinners that are destined for hell. We need to bring them up to that point where that they see the glory in God and the blessings of heaven that is available to them by just simply accepting them as, you know, our Christ and Savior. So we start with Romans 12, where it goes to, this is what I considered, what should I do? When I asked my quest, the question to myself, what should I do? Romans 12 is what guided me in that. And it says in from the verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that it may be proved what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say true, the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God had dealt with to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, all the members have not the same office. And this really touched me in the sense that we all have a part to play, you know, in this kingdom. Not one of us is greater than the other. It's like those jigsaw puzzles. We all fit together uniquely to create a bigger picture. And that bigger picture is the kingdom of God. And we need to understand that there's no greater or lesser role in serving God. We just need to do it with all our hearts, all our spirits, and everything we have in us, but focusing on him as the true redeemer, him as the savior, him as the one that can guide us and take us to where we need to be. It goes on in verse 5. So we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another, having them gifts deferring according to the grace that is given to us with a prophecy let prophesy according to the proportion of faith or ministry let us wait on our ministering or he that teacheth on teaching or he that exhorted on exhortation he that giveth let him do it with simplicity he that ruleth with diligence he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness and it shows and what I like to reflect on is the, the different environment we are in now. You know, so much has changed with technology, with the lives that we are living, with the work-life balance aspect of it, that we sometimes, we lose faith or we lose sight of our purpose in Christ. And we all have that talent that could be given towards the ministry and towards the kingdom that could really save souls and make such a big difference. And I want to encourage you all, have that time of devotion with Christ, have that time spent reaching out to him, yearning, understanding, Lord, what is my purpose and my plan in your kingdom? And be open to his words, not what we want him to say, but what he needs to say to us. And once we follow and listen to his direction, we will live a blessed and purposeful life. So be encouraged by that. Know that he is there to guide us. He's there to take us to where we need to be. Verse 9 goes on to say, let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love, and honor preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoice in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing the necessity of saints given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. We have the same mind one to another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own deceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, said the Lord. Therefore, if my, thine enemy hunger, feed him. If, thy, if he thirst, give him drink. For in doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. And reminds us so much times that we may be discouraged. We may focus so much on ourselves. 
We may have walls built up against our enemies, thinking that we need to protect ourselves. We need to guard ourselves. But we need to understand that Christ is our protector. Christ is our guardian. And no matter what we are going through, he is there for us. Be patient in tribulation, it says, continuing instant in prayer. We need to understand that prayer is that key. Prayer is that communication we have with him. That's where we spend that time talking to God, understanding what plans he has for our lives, understanding where he wants us to go so that we can fulfill our purpose in his ministry, his kingdom. We can build that ministry to reach others. Amen? And I said he would amen. And I want to remind, you know, being in this online church experience, sometimes we don't realize that we miss the, the loud amens or the shouts in church. And we need to sort of leverage off the technology now. And I remember, you know, in the work world, they always said, when you type in capital letters, it seems as though you're shouting. Anytime I got an email and somebody wrote in capital letters, I would reply, you are shouting to me. But this is the best time in your comments. Please type in capital letters. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let us shout. Let us shout a word of goodness unto others. Let us shout what he has done for us. And it may not be a verbal shout. You can do it in your homes. You can say that amen, that praise the Lord, that hallelujah, and shout his goodness. But also when you type it in your comments, put those in caps so that we can shout and show the glory and goodness of God. Amen. And then I looked at when on how and who I want to be. And that's where it took me to Matthew 25. And I will go through a couple of verses in Matthew 25. It may take a while, but it's so important that we sometimes look at the scripture and take out of the scripture what it has for us. We can talk, we can say words, we can say nice encouragement, but unless you go to the scripture and uh, we are grounded in the word, then we are weak in him. We need to be so grounded and so comforted by his words that we could take that to nations, to others, and be a blessing and an ambassador for Christ. And that's why I look at Matthew 25, where it started. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to be the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. You know, sometimes we lose focus of the purpose and the plan for God because there's a time where there may be quiet time. And this COVID is the example for me. COVID is the, 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 the ideal example of this by the scriptures talking about. We are away from the churches and we may think it's a time to slumber and sleep, waiting for that bridegroom or waiting for the churches to open back. But it's not so. We need to be prepared for when things open back, that we could be a blessing to the ministry. But not wait for things to be opened back to be a blessing to the ministry. Because there are people we can reach out to, there are other believers, there are the unbelievers that we need to share our word with, our, our testimony with, that can encourage them. The church and the ministry is not only about what God is doing for us, or where he has taken us, but it's also about how do we make a difference in this world? And I want to encourage us to not wait for churches to be opened back to carry out our great command and our great commission. And it says, And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out and meet him. And then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Because you know when you trim the lamp, it gives you a brighter light. It gives you that focus that sort of light in the darkness that could shine great. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us your oil, for our lamps are gone out. And the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they were ready, went in with him to marriage, and the door was shut. It shows that we need to be prepared. We need to be there in our ministries and not just waiting for the bridegroom to come but keeping our light shining but when that light is shining we have that oil in reserve because it talks about the wise virgins having that sort of i would say silo where they kept the oil they had the lamps and kept that extra oil so that when the bridegroom came the light not only kept shining but continued shining for a while 
And during this COVID period, we need to do that. We need to keep our light shining, have that storeroom or that barn where we, you know, to have that blessing coming in and we keep it overflowing so that when it's time to come back to church, we encourage and we're so blessed that it will be a great experience from us. I'm telling you, I'm so waiting for us to get back to church and meet one another because I know we've spent so much time away that we are missing each other and it will be such a great opportunity for us to spread that gospel and spend that time with each other. And verse 11 says, Afterward came also the virgin, saying unto Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. For the kingdom of heaven is the kingdom of heaven is a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents. And this is the part in the in the sermon that I want us to focus on our talents now. We spoke about being ready in our ministry and being ready for or with Christ, but it's wanting to be ready. But what are we ready with? What are we doing in his kingdom to really be a blessing to each other? So it speaks about our talents now. And unto one he gave five talents, to another one, and to every man according to his several ability and straightforward took his journey. And then he, he had received the five talents, went and traded with the same and made them over other five talents. And likewise, he that received two, he also gained another two. But he that received one went and dig it in the earth and hid his Lord's money. You know, sometimes you think thinking that we need to take our talent, talents and save it. Save it for when? Save it for who? You know, we need to question that. What are we doing with our talents? Are we using it and being a blessing to God and having that multiplier effect? Or are we just taking it and saving it for some day that may never come? And after a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. So this is when the Lord came and really challenged what are we doing with our talents? And so he said that had received five talents, came and bought the other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. You also that received two talents and came and said, Lord, thou deliverest me two talents. Behold, I gave, I gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee rule over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. So it sees, you know, it shows here that we have different measure in our talents. We don't think that there's more or less. It shows that the person with five and two talents, they both entered into the joy of the Lord. Because, you know, God looked at how they each used the measure of talents that he had given unto them. No matter if we, we consider one greater or one lesser, it is how we use those talents that, you know, the Lord looks upon. And then verse 24 goes on to say, Then he which had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou had not sown and gathering where thou had not thou hast not strawed, and I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received my own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which had ten talents, unto every one that had, shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that had not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And sometimes you need to realize our time and purpose. God is not a God that doesn't have a purpose and a plan for his kingdom. If we do not use our talents, he will find someone else to use it. His kingdom will not stop. The journey will not stop. His purpose and his plan will not stop for this, this kingdom. And unless we want to rob ourselves of those blessings, we need to be part of it and understand how we can contribute to the ministries. 
So from verse 30, it goes on to say, and this is where I like where it talks about the sheep and the goats. It says, and cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness that shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when the son of man of glory shall come into his glory and the holy angels with him. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory and before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another as shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. And this is where we need to listen intently, the difference between the sheep and the goats. Because it's not only about how we use our talents, but also about how we approach the ministry. And verse 23 says, And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye be blessed of my father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. If I was hungry and he gave me meat, I was thirsty, thirsty and he gave me drink. I was a stranger and he took me in. Naked and he clothed me, I was sick and he visited me. I was in prison and he came unto me. Then shall the righteousness answer him saying, Lord, when he saw we thee and hungered and fed thee or thirsty and gave thee drink, when saw thee thee a stranger and took thee in or naked and clothed thee, and when saw thee sick on prison and came unto thee, and the Lord shall answer and say unto him, or them, and verily I say unto you, inasmuch as he have it unto one of the least of these my brethren, he shall have done it unto me. And I want to repeat that, inasmuch as he have done it unto one of the least of my brethren, he have done it unto me. We are no greater and lesser than each other, and when we share our gospel and when we support each other, it's really showing that love and kindness that God has for each of us. And verse 41 says, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, he cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. If I was hungered and he gave me no meat, I was thirsty and he gave me no drink. I was a stranger and he took me not in, naked and he clothed me not, sick and in prison, he visited me not. Then shall you also answer unto him, saying, Lord, when saw he, we thee and hunger, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then he shall answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, and as much as he did it not to one of the least of these, he did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. And it shows where we sometimes think, you know, this person may not need my goodness, my kindness, and we think of them lesser. And we are no lesser and greater in the kingdom of God. And we need to be there for each other. We need to be there for each other, no matter our status or positions, who we think we may be. We sometimes focus on blessing those who are already blessed, you know, building up those who are already strong, and not looking at those that need our support and need our strength through these times. And the Bible talks about that way. You know, he went through the scripture that I just spoke about and saying, you know, it doesn't matter if the lesser or the greater that we bless, consider it, how are we working through Christ? What will we do through him? Do He considers himself lesser and greater. And the scripture talks about the sheep, you know, because of the unselfishness and given behavior, they inherit the kingdom of God. And the other group, which is the goats, so they are selfish, self-centered, self-absorbed, self-seeking. And we need to understand, who do we want to be? Do we want to be goat or do we want to be sheep? Where do we apply ourselves to the kingdom of God? What ministries can I be involved with? And do not ever think that one ministry is greater or lesser than the other. It is all about meeting the unbelievers and saving those souls and building up ourselves as Christians, creating a community that we can share with one another. So I want to encourage you all, look to God, go in that time of reverence, go in that time of prayer and understand really and ask God, where do you want me to be? What do you want me to do? Lord, take control of my life. Lord, let me be a blessing to others. Let me be a blessing to your kingdom. I've made this decision to really give my life entirely to the ministry. And I would say it's the easiest decision in my life. It came with consequences. It came with pluses and minuses that people may look at. But I look at the benefits and the blessings that God has brought to me. 
And I want to encourage you all, not everyone needs to be in full-time ministry. We all have those times and talents uh, or the, our purpose and season in life uh, that we need to give to God. And sometimes uh, having a career, having a job can create a blessing. It can create, create an avenue for us to meet others, to reach out to those that are lost that we need to save. So I want, I want to encourage all of us, you know, spend a devotional time reach out to me if you want to have those conversations about how we can spend time in ministry but i do believe that we all have that time and that talent that we can give to the ministry and give to god to really serve his kingdom so i want to keep us encouraged and blessed and i want to leave us by really giving our affirmation and when we say this affirmation it is not conditional this is what god has given us as christians this is what God has given us as believers. This is what encouragement he has given us through our walks in life. And I want to leave us by saying, look into one another. Look to ourselves first and give that affirmation. Say with confidence, I am blessed. Look to the others in your home and say, you are blessed. And then in a spirit of communion, let us say we are blessed. And let us believe it. Because this is Communion Sunday. And we're going to have that Holy Communion where we share with one another. And we need to understand the goodness and graciousness of God and what he has done for our lives and what he will do for our lives. So I want us to stay encouraged, stay blessed, stay safe during these challenging times and not let your wicks go out, but keep your lamps filled with oil so that when we do get back into that church service, we are so blessed and refreshed that we can be a blessing to others and a blessing to the ministry. So amen and stay blessed. Good morning, Redemption family. Thank you, Pastor Donald, for that word of encouragement. For us to use our gifts and our talents for the honor and glory of God. This morning, we want to get our hearts ready for Holy Communion. So you can get your family together as we prepare our hearts to partake in communion. And what we want to do first, we want to say a word of prayer as we get from your heads. Let's pray. Father, we give you praise, honor, and glory, Lord. We thank you for your goodness, your peace, your mercy, and your grace, Lord. Lord, we just want to ask you right now, Father, that you would forgive us of our sins and wash us with the blood of Jesus Christ, Lord. Forgive us and cleanse us of every single sin, every wrongdoing, every iniquity, every transgression, oh Lord. Purify us, oh God, right now, Lord, totally. So that, Lord, when we receive these emblems, oh God, it will not bring damnation unto our lives, oh God. Forgive us right now, Father, forgive us in Jesus' name. And Lord, my God, we want to ask also that you will bless the emblems of God, the bread and the wine of God, so that, Father, when we receive it, O God, it will be a blessing unto our bodies, O God, and that your name will be glorified, O God, in all that we do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank God. This morning, we want to read from 1 Corinthians 11. I want to encourage us with the word this morning. And it says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So let's party together. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's partake together. Father, we just thank you for your body Hallelujah. and we thank you for your blood. Hallelujah. I encourage us this morning to so remember the purpose you. of the cross. Bless you. Bless you. Remember why Christ died. It's that so we could live a victorious life this morning. Hallelujah. So that we would walk in total victory. Hallelujah. There is power in the blood. Yes, Lord. There is yes, Lord. healing in the blood this morning. Hallelujah. And he Lord. is the bread of life. Hallelujah. I encourage you right where you are to lift your hands Hallelujah. and just exalt him because Hallelujah. he's a mighty God. Hallelujah. He's a wonderful God. Hallelujah. He's the God that heals. He's the God that saves and touches and delivers us. 
And we thank him this morning Hallelujah. as we remember his body Hallelujah. and remember his cross. We thank him for the wonderful yes. things that will come upon our lives yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. as we serve him. Hallelujah. We thank God this morning. God bless you as we continue our service. What a great time we had today that we can come together and participate in communion. Well, now it's time for our announcements. For persons with prayer requests, whatever your prayer request may be, we encourage you to call the numbers appearing on your screen, or you can send us an email to get in contact with Pastor Donald Ramdas or Bishop Keith Ramdas. If you would like to give up your tithes and offering, you can do so via the bank information on your screen. You can choose to do a direct deposit at the bank or you can do an online transfer instead. Well, we have reached the end of this morning's service. Before we leave, I would like to thank those persons who faithfully attend or view our online services. We just want to say that we deeply appreciate each and every one of you. Well, that's it for today. So stay blessed, Redemption Worship Center family. Stay safe, and I will see you all on Thursday.